I'm Gary and behind me is my Engage Layout Helifield. Um, for, you, for those of you who watch the channel on a regular basis, you'll know that uh, previously the layout was called uh, Westmoreland and uh, you'll probably notice from the titles um, New Era, New Name. So that's the first part of the uh, introduction is the, the new name of the layout. And this is my uh, first video since um, the Wally exhibition. So that was my first major exhibition that I've uh, attended. Um, and uh, it was really, really good on, oh, for several reasons. First of all, uh, and for me, the most important one was to meet up with quite a number of um, friends that I've made on uh, YouTube and uh, on uh, the WWS uh, group. So, so my first protocol when I arrived at Wally was uh, to, uh, to go to the WWS stand and uh, meet uh, Craig, Sam and Martin, who uh, really sort of got me involved in the hobby in the first place from seeing uh, those guys' videos. Um, I also met up with uh, Andy from uh, Morland Model Railway, spent quite a bit of time with Andy, really good to meet up with him, and, and also uh, Stephen from Elvenholm, um, had a good uh, couple of catch-ups with him while we were going around the uh, exhibition, um, and then uh, I attended the uh, sort of YouTubers meetup as well, which was good to, to see a few new faces. So all in all, a really good exhibition, and um, to, to be fair, I think uh, from what I saw of the exhibition, sort of uh, uh, was a catalyst for what is now um, going to be a new era on the layout. And when I say a new era, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, update the layout to a modern layout. So that will have um, all the latest rolling stock um, from uh, well, from 2020 onwards, I guess, and uh, from what I've seen at Helifield during my time visiting the uh, the station and the uh, Settle in Carlisle line. So it's been a major, or it's, it is going to be a major change. I've started that change. Um, I've already put up for sale uh, and sold quite, already quite a substantial amount of um, locos, steam locos and uh, era four and five uh, rolling stock, so wagons and so on. I have still got um, uh, a substantial amount still available. So if you are interested, um, drop me a line and um, yeah, I can, I can provide you with an inventory list or direct you to uh, uh, the items that are on eBay, but there's only, there's only probably 50% of the items on eBay at present there's a lot more to uh, to go on so yeah um without further ado let's go over to the layout and see how i'm going to convert it to uh, uh to modern era so the uh the first step in updating the layout to uh, modern era is to uh to change the uh, uh stock so i've actually kept um five six steam logos I say five then, 16 locos. because I've just recently added the uh, A4 Union of South Africa, which has now um, been replaced with the one that was uh, delivered to me uh, uh, faulty, which was in the last video, so that's been replaced, and uh, uh, I'd be glad to hear that that's actually uh, running fine. Um, with three locos in front of you, I've not ran them at all yet. Um, so these have yet to be run in and uh, tried on the layout. You'll see in a, a moment um, why I haven't been able to run them because uh, I've started uh, taking the, uh, the track work apart to update it. Um, so yeah, the first purchase was the uh, class um, 70. So the, uh, the Colas rail freight. So um, these are used quite extensively on the Settling Carlisle um, uh, as a heavy haulage uh, loco, uh, particularly for the um, timber wagons. Um, second one, second loco that I purchased was the GBRF Class 60. Uh, again, um, these are frequent runners um, on the uh, on the Settling Carlisle. 
um, pulling sort of heavy heavy freight. And there's also the Class 60 behind, again, the Colas uh, um, rail freight as well. So uh, this one was quite difficult to find. I managed to find it at a small um, model shop online. And uh, these two uh, I got on as sale items. So I got about 30, 40 pounds off what was probably the normal price. So um, I'm conscious of that as well with the Christmas uh, sales coming up, if I can pick up some, some bargains. Okay, so we've covered the new locos. I'm also planning on um, purchasing uh, and adding to the fleet. I've pre-ordered um, uh, at the moment a couple of class 66s. So that's the uh, Dapol DB Schenker class 66. And also I've ordered um, the class 66 GBRF um, uh, class 66. And I'm thinking of also adding the class 66 Colas as well. Um, the other local that I'm thinking of also getting is the class 68 DRS um, Compass train. And that will be to, uh, to um, uh, pull along the sort of ballast and engineering uh, trains. So yeah, so I've got uh, two 66s on order and then another couple of locos to uh, to add to that. I'm also thinking of purchasing the new um, Graham Farish Class 158 DMU as well, uh, as they're, they're really the, uh, the uh, train that you see most frequently on the Settle in Carlisle and pulls up uh, the heli field to collect passengers. So uh, I think that's coming out at the end of December, early Jan. Um, so uh, yet to decide on that, but I think it's a, a must have, but it's also dependent on me completing the sale of uh, a lot of my uh, uh, existing uh, rolling stock. Okay, so these are the wagons that I've purchased uh, so far in varying numbers. Um, the first of, the do of those uh, at the front is the uh, Revolution Trains JN, JNA-Ts. So these are the box wagons, the GBRF uh, um, livery. And um, these come nicely packaged, as you can see, and uh, with some extras in there as well, some add-on um, accessories. Really, really nice detailed uh, wagon. I'll probably review these at a later date. Um, so I've got um, currently got 10 of those. So that will form a nice uh, uh, rake of, uh, of aggregate wagons. These are ten, tended to be used from the, uh, the numerous quarries and so on up around uh, uh, the Settle and Carlisle line and, and pass quite frequently through, uh, through Helifield. So the next, uh, the next wagon you see there is the um, Farish Castle Cement Wagon. So these uh, originate from the cement works at Clitheroe. And again, th these are quite a frequent uh, passerby through, um, through Helifield. So uh, this is a nice uh, Farish wagon. Um, so that's the, the number there so i've currently got eight of those so again they'll form a nice rake of around uh, a meter long so uh on this size of layout that's uh, i think that's a nice uh, rake of, uh, of of wagons uh next one along i've just literally got these today and these are the um dapol falcon uh, ballast wagons so as I say literally these just come in the post uh, today so the plan is to use these um, as the name describes as ballast wagons I'll probably locate these in the quarry in the quarry siding and um, these will be or form part of the engineering um, train that I've got um, and then finally I'll just spin the camera round as you'll see at the back these was one of the this was the first 
um, set of wagons that I purchased. So these again are uh, Revolution uh, trains. These are a double pack and um, turn the box round. So these are the IWA uh, timber carriers. Um, really um, like these wagons. Uh, just pull one out. So as you can see, you'll be able to see now. So these are a double pack. So again, nicely packaged. Um, again, so double pack there. And um, these are what really uh, caught my eye when I got to Hellyfield when they come through with the long um, timber trains uh, on the on the, uh, on the back. So I've currently got eight of these. Again, probably uh, well over a metre long when I when I have the eight um, connected. I did find, however, that I was getting even on the this third radius um, bend that I was getting. Um, as they turned in, uh, I was actually having issues with the uh, wagons uncoupling, and um, as it turned out, they were. I was actually getting an issue with the um, with the buffers. So I was getting buffer lock, which I was surprised at on a third radius uh, curve. So what I'm actually tested out is um, I've tested the wagons connected to each other with uh, Hunt magnetic couplings. And uh, that seems to have uh, done the trick, thankfully. So that's the, um, that's the current um, wagon fleet or freight fleet. So a good starting point. Um, I'm not really gonna get too much more in the way of um, wagons, maybe another set of, um, aggregate wagons. Um, I'm also looking at the um, China Clay Silver Bullet wagons, as you see on the screen, the weathered version. Uh, unfortunately, I can't seem to get hold of those, uh, certainly not new or second hand. So uh, I'll be on the lookout uh, for some of those. Obviously, most of you will be uh, Pleased to hear that I am keeping um, steam on the layout. And uh, to be fair, that's my um, first passion is, is for the steam engines. Um, the main reason why I, I changed was I couldn't really relate to the steam age as such in terms of um, the 50s and 60s. And uh, I, I think it, by visiting Helifield over the last few years, uh, I've um, sort of got more connected with the modern day um, locos and rolling stock, and I can relate to those. I can obviously also relate to um, the steam um, excursions that come through Helifield and stop off for about an hour at a time to, uh, uh, to fill up with water and um, generally, generally hook up from, uh, from what is a diesel pulled um, set of coaches to uh, um, to having a steam train hooked up at the uh, at the station, really really good to to watch it take place, and and that's what I'm looking to uh, uh, replicate um, with uh, with this layout. So yeah, I'm not going to stop buying steam locos. Obviously, I've just bought this new uh, A4 Union of South Africa, this Dapol model. And um, I'll be running um, the Maroon uh, Mark One coaches. I'm probably going to upgrade them um, or get a set of the um, West Coast Tourist um, Farish wagon, Farish coaches that have just come out. So that's my plan. Um, but again, it's all down to uh, to funding, and uh, that that will be probably a, again a six to 12 month uh, process of, of getting the stock back back up to uh, a level that I had before. Okay, so we've covered the locals and the rolling stock. So uh, let's see what I'm gonna sort of update or change on the layout. I'm trying to change as little as possible. 
but um, the signal box will stay. Um, the Aeskill signal box is long gone in the current world, but uh, it will stay on this layout. There are still signal boxes of this type on the Settle and Carlisle. There's one in particular at Settle Junction. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's gonna stay. Um, farm, farm won't change. Um, I'll probably add some, I've got a passed out horse there. Um, I'll probably change um, some of the farm machinery and update it and some of the vehicles, um, but we'll see, that's, that's way down on the list at the moment. Um, moving round to the quarry, I'm probably going to almost certainly keep this the same. Um, might make, make it a little bit more run down, not sure yet. Um, and then I'm going to add some probably modern day um, sort of JCBs. So these will, um, these three vehicles will no doubt be uh, be sold on at some point. Um, hilltop won't change. You probably noticed I've moved the house to the right. I'm going to put an outbuilding where you see those white lines. So um, yeah, got impatient changing things again. Um, but uh, yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> These things happen. Um, coming down, still not done much here, but this will, this won't change from what I planned. So the barn will still go there, and all the scenery will still be applied around this area. So the first of the changes to the track. <clears throat> this isn't the final um, track by any means. Uh, what I am going to do, where you see these um, set track ST. Um, points, I'm going to take the opportunity to replace with um, these medium points, which uh, I know certain people have been asked, have been uh, advising for me to do this for quite some while. However, I will only be doing this on, so there'll be two there, um, two the other side, and then two at each, uh, further two at the opposite ends of the um, um, the goods passing loop. So all this will be uh, will be updated. Uh, there's various other tweaks to the uh, track that I'll be doing. Um, the major change here, as you can see from all these um, wires that are parking through, um, is that the track to the uh, what was the engine shed have gone. Uh, these tracks will actually go. I'm just showing you where the engine shed was previously. And um, on the uh, modern day heli field, the hard standing is still here, um, but you'll see, um, oh, it's hard to, it's difficult to make out, that all these tracks have been cut up and stacked. And uh, that's what I'll be replicating. There'll be lots of trees, um, really overgrown. Um, the turntable pit at Helifield is completely overgrown. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to um, keep it a little bit more intact. Um, as you'll see from the photograph, I'm going to base it on another turntable in the settling Carlisle. Um, just, just so it does keep some character. Um, and you can see that it was once was a turntable rather than just fully um, overgrown and then um, with this freed up space I'm going to bring the wall this stone wall further down and uh, build this hillside up where I was going to have the uh, coaling stage and hopefully there'll be room to put this um, house on the hill as there currently is at Hellyfield it's a bit more in the distance but um, I think it'll look good there with some gardens and then the track, the dirt track leading to the farm and possibly back up the, the hill uh, around here as well. So that's the plan for that area. So uh, I've got lots of um, photographs and video reference. And that's another thing that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to is that I like to copy uh, what I see and uh, from 
from the black and white photos of Helifield, for what few there are, I can't really do that. And uh, also in the steam era, these these areas weren't really overgrown. They were kept um, uh, cut back, so obviously present, prevented fires and so on. But in the modern day, they seem to be uh, very overgrown. So um, that's what I want to do. Um, I like doing the scenery, as you know. So uh, I'm really looking forward to doing um, this section. Moving back, um, there's going to be some slight changes to the track work here, but nothing to uh, really get excited about. I'm going to add a further uh, medium radius point here, which will run up to this curve point, and then these two curve points will come back and connect to here and here. Uh, the good thing is, by adding these curved points, removing the points that were here before, as you'll see from the track plans, is that the um, this this track, which previously sort of cut in in line with the with the um, platform here, um, I'm going to make this straight as far as I can, and then have the curve um, going up to the up to the point here. So what that'll enable us to do is have a more um, straight platform and then possibly curve the platform to around here, um, but we'll see. And then down here, this is where, so it's a bit of a mess at the moment, because I've been ripping things up, but this is where the, um, the goods uh, yard was gonna be with the goods shed. Um, you've guessed it, it's gone. And uh, what you'll see is where these two points are here is where these lines will, will come down into what is a modern day uh, shed. And uh, currently they actually um, reverse um, timber wagons into the shed and there's a long siding that, that runs way back down in parallel with the, uh, the main lines. Um, so I'm going to replicate and put one shed in, the secondary shed at the side, which has no rails at, uh, going into it, um, won't be uh, um, probably replicated, it depends on room, um, but that will be a scratch built um, building. <clears throat> in terms of the station, um, I'm still going to scratch build the settlement, sorry, the Helifield station. It will, it will have obviously more modern features added. So this end of the station uh, up to about here is 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 um, under network rail. So that's got the digital um, signage boards. It's got the, um, this area is all fenced off. It's overgrown, but it's all fenced off. Um, but then, when you pass down to this end of the station, this is covered by uh, the current owners of the station, which is um, uh, Shed 24, and they have, uh, a, a, well, this isn't the station itself, but this end of the station, they've got a tea room, and then there's a sort of a museum in this part of the, uh, uh, of the station building. And then this part is all overgrown. Um, even the platforms are re in really bad condition. So again, I'm going to replicate that um, on the uh, on the layout as well. So I've got all this track work to do here. Not much track work to do here. I'm probably gonna have, sorry I'm jumping around, but I'm probably gonna have a couple of sidings coming down here. One will be, um, uh, overgrown but the other one the longest one which will run from this point here and probably be about a meter long will uh, will be used to store um, wagons okay so nearly there um, I don't even remember in the last video I was uh, pondering over putting a bridge across um, obviously a lot of things have changed since, but I still intend putting this bridge across, which I've 
since made and uh, <clears throat> I think I mentioned in the video that I hadn't seen any bridges passing over four lines it was uh, a bit of a miscommunication on my part because I was really relating to the Settle and Carlisle line where um, I can't think of any situations where you have more than uh, the uh, up and down lines and uh, just have bridges passing over the two main lines so that's what I meant so apologies for the miscommunication but I did get um, quite a lot of comments on that and uh, Andy from Moreland came up with a good idea about possibly building a road over the tunnel so I'd actually move this tunnel to probably here and have a road across the top which is a good idea uh, I may still revert to that um, but I do like the idea of the bridge passing over the lines and then having this short section the only thing against this is it's is quite a short um, section of track and uh, whether it looks um, sort of prototypical or not but I think that's the way I'm going to go and then the idea is you'll come across the bridge and then the road will come to here and then there will be a track that runs down here um, obviously this won't be here and then this will, will gain you access into the into this area uh, and there's something very similar at Ellifield Station so I think that's what I'm going to try and uh, build in. I think it'd be a good point of interest as well, having the track. Um, probably have trees in an overgrown area and then the track comes down into the um, station itself. So that's the changes. Um, you'll probably notice I've, uh, I'm going to redo um, the top of that tunnel. Um, because I've lost quite a bit of space here, I'm probably going to put a pub at the top um, and then have that uh, with, with trees and so on. Um, but yeah, I've probably gone uh, one step forward since you last here and then three steps back, but that's nothing new for me. Um, however, I do, <laughs> I've said this numerous times, but I do feel really uh, buzzing about... Uh, uh, the, these new plans and the new rolling stock I've got um, and the fact of the matter is I can literally replicate whatever I see up at Helifield as not using so much books and trying to um, rummage around for photographs of rolling stock and so on I literally can um, model what I see which is what I really like um, doing so yeah um, Hopefully on the next video I'll have the track done, we've got the Christmas break so hopefully I can get a lot of this uh, track work done, um, not much to the scenery at this moment in time and then uh, hopefully we will have some uh, trains running next time you're here and uh, you'll be able to see the new diesels with the uh, long rakes of um, the freight wagons. Okay so uh, Let's leave the Helifield layout and uh, okay, so we're just about bringing the video to a close. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed what you've seen. Um, may have come as quite a shock to uh, a number of you. Maybe uh, some of you don't even like what I'm actually doing. I know uh, there's a lot of um, out and out steam enthusiasts out there. Um, obviously we're keeping steam on the layout, but we'll sort of have the best of both worlds. We'll have the vintage um, steam and also the modern day um, diesels um, with the long um, freight wagons so I'm really looking forward to it um, looking forward to the work it's given me some fresh impetus to uh, to get back on the layout as if I needed any um, so the next job is to to get the track work done hopefully I can get that uh, completed over Christmas and um, yeah, so it, it just remains for me to uh, to say to all of the subscribers, thank you very much. It's it's still amazing to me that I've got um, uh, well over 1,300 subscribers now. Um, 
for my, uh, as I keep saying it, my little uh, layout in the garage. Um, so yeah, thanks ever so much. Um, please keep keep with the channel, um, even though there are, um, we've now got some some diesels on here that might be up to everybody's taste. But yeah, please stick with the channel. Um, I think you'll enjoy what's coming. Um, please keep leaving your comments. I really enjoy the comments. I must admit, after the year that I've had, uh, as, as you're aware. I went around seven or eight months without posting a video for um, personal reasons. Um, the comments that you left in the last video really, um, really picked me up and uh, I'm really thankful um, for those. Got a great community and um, yeah, it was a nice, uh, a nice pick me up. So it just remains for me to uh, wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Um, and uh, Happy New Year and uh, hopefully lots of happy modelling over Christmas and uh, hopefully uh, you get uh, lots of trains and uh, wagons and coaches I know I will um, but uh, yeah it just remains for me to uh, again wish you all a very Merry Christmas uh, and good health so cheers from myself, Settle Carlisle and Helifield and uh, we'll see you in the new year with another video and uh, yeah, cheers for now, bye.